Today I would like to compare mathematics and magic. This is an excerpt from Philosophy of Mathematics and Introduction to a World of Proofs and Pictures. So uh, what do we have, what kind of ingredients do we have in the mathematical image of things? First, mathematical results are certain. Mathematics is objective. Proofs are essential. Diagrams and schemata are psychologically useful but prove nothing. Diagrams or portrayals can even be misleading. Mathematics is wedded to classical logic. Mathematics is independent of sense experience. The history of mathematics is cumulative. Computer proofs are merely long and complicated regular proofs. Some mathematical problems are unsolvable in principle. Now, what I would like to bring your attention to, that uh, I'm using the inductive deductive feedback loop based on epistemology or knowledge and subjective and intersubjective experiences in building instances of laws of the magical world, of the metaphysical, of the transcendent, of the spiritual realms. And uh, while we are moving across experiences of this kind, there are also many dangers that are ahead. And I'm not talking about dangers that may be damaging to your mind, to your soul and so on, but cognitive dangers, cognitive bias, errors, delusions and so on. So first of all, I would like to bring your attention to something that will be foundational belief acknowledgement. All of us have belief systems, worldviews, tunnel realities, and they are fundamental to our cognition and perception. They organize and make sense of the world. However, we may also modify those belief systems, therefore our memories about the past, about our identity, and about our worldview changes. Now, during any form of uh, activity, critical activity, including critical approaches to magic, we need to be aware of the cognitive bias. It is a natural aspect of the human thinking and it affects our interpretation, hermeneion and perception. Therefore, being aware of those biases, being educated in biases, is improving our critical methods in approach to magic. Hermeneutical rigor, and otherwise the way we interpret and delimit reality. We need to emphasize the importance of rigorous methodology in an act of hermeneutics, hermeneion. We cannot rely on untested or subjective interpretation or interpretations of other people. They are likely to contain errors, especially in the magical traditions. We need to test things for ourselves. Like Shakyamuni once said, do not trust your masters and people that are gurus. You can listen to them, exchange experiences, be inspired, exchange ideas, but you need to test and verify every single thing in those schools by yourself. If you're unsuccessful in progressing in initiations, you won't test it. If you are, you will have a completely different worldview and interpretation based on the revelations and the techniques you encountered. So subjectivity and interpretation. So experiential knowledge, the knowledge that you build from experiences, is inherently interpretive and is prone to bias. So approaching such knowledge with skepticism and critical thinking, we acknowledge its values because we need some certainties to move around, but we need to revalidate it at every single point in time, while gathering more experience and more knowledge along the way. Now, this inductive deductive methodology that I already mentioned in the very beginning, it involves deriving general principles from specific instances or inductive reasoning. So, for example, we see a, I don't know, a forest spirit, or we have a sudden change of perception. What does it mean? Does it overinflate into general law that we will always have a, a change of perception of this sort, or is it an instance that proves that such things are possible? When we encounter a repetition in such instances, we can create general laws or modulate the variables of such general laws. 
Similarly, if we use the deductive reasoning, so we test the validity of those principles from general principles to particulars and instances. And we always need to ensure that they have a solid epistemological or knowledge-based foundation through verified experiences and through facts. Now, let us leave science to science and magic to magic. Sometimes they overlap, but most often they do not. So, uh, uncertainty in magic. We must recognize that there are dynamic laws. There are also deep laws that are unchangeable, but most of the time we navigate through circumstances that change and they have different laws according to the setting, circumstances, can you lucky or the genius of the place, the entities and dimensions that are engaged in the process of us weaving magical patterns. And observation and interpretation in this context can be influenced also by cognitive bias, despite the fact that we may have the perfect circumstances, perfect setting, we may conjure the most excellent of patterns and our magic is effective, we are still prone to cognitive bias about it and building up a belief system around those things. Expansive awareness or acknowledging that only extremely subtle and expansive minds can navigate between near objective, not objective, near objective and intersubjective approximations and true occurrences to recognize patterns and synchronicities while avoiding cognitive errors. And we need deep understanding to move in the internal and external world to bring about the change within and without. Guarding against delusion, this is very important in the interpretation of occurrences of magical provenance and metaphysical provenance, that is, magic is the potential for, has a potential for cognitive bias and often wishful thinking may collapse the experiences into our belief systems and interpretations into a flawed delusion. So it is important to maintain a critical and discerning mindset to prevent this. Now, persistence in pursuit. If we need to, if we want to be engaged in magic, we are recklessly engaged in it. We follow it, but we verify it along the way. We need to recognize that some problems may be insolvable at their core, but this should not deter one from pursuing answers and seeking deep understanding nevertheless. So what protected my mind along the way on my magical path through the last 25 years was skepticism and reason, the last magicians of rational thought. The importance of skepticism and reason in magical operations prevents the abuse of interpretation in favor of our wronged or erred belief systems worldviews that push us towards delusion. But this skepticism should not inhibit the practice of magic entirely. This is more of a balance in between open-minded exploration and strictness and rigor interpreting it. So this shared, I would like to go back to the platonic interpretation of maths. And uh, posit that despite all the rejection of the powers and forces a priori in Platonism. They are metaphysical truths and mathematics can be elevated to metaphysics just like mathematics may be a shadow of metaphysics. So, uh, this is much said. Thank you.